Welcome to our channel. Thank you for taking time to watch our latest video upload. We at a certain centre in Auckland, New Zealand have heard whispers of a recession coming probably early in 2023. There's only like one month left or 2022. So they reckon it'd be the end of somewhere in between of 2023. So what is a recession and how does it affect us? Because it's happening, going to happen in the USA and then it probably will hit globally. We heard rumours, whispers that this recession will hit so hard that none will recover from it, that jobs won't be hiring, they'll freeze up, they won't hire anyone. So get in now, all this sort of stuff. So we're just trying to verify those claims. So again we're asking what the heck is a recession for some of us that have a clue, know a little bit but don't know enough or don't know anything at all about what that is and how it's going to affect us. So we define the word, look for the definition of the word recession and we found a couple of websites that define it. Recession, what is it and what causes it? And it's fact checked by this person here, Ryan Eichler. Holds a BSA, or BSBA, etc., etc. And there's the definition here: recession, a significant, widespread, and prolonged downturn in economic activity. A recession is a significant, widespread, and prolonged downturn in, in economic activity. A common rule of thumb is that two consecutive quarters of negative gross domestic product GDP growth means recession. All their more complex formulas are also used. Economists at the National Bureau of Economic Research, NBIR, probably in the USA somewhere, measure recessions by looking at non-farm payrolls, industrial production and retail sales, among other indicators going far beyond the simpler, or they're not as accurate, two quarters of negative GPD measure. However, the EMBA also says there is no fixed rule about what measures contribute to information to the process or how they are weighted in our decisions. Key takeaways. A downturn must be deep, pervasive and lasting to qualify as a recession by the EMBA's definition, but these calls come after the fact. It is not a clear formula to identify a recession as soon as one begins. It's still not really telling us... Well, it's telling us something, but... A lot of us may not understand, and we may see it all as tech talk, jargon, jibber jabber. Important in June 2020, the Ember has said the US economy, the US economy's expansion peaked in February 2020, falling into a recession caused by the COVID 19 pandemic. The next month, the economic expansion that started in June 2009 and so forth, understanding recessions since the Industrial Revolution. Most economies have grown steadily and economic contractions are an exception, although recessions are still common. Between 1960 and 2007, there were 122 recessions that affected 21 advanced economies, roughly 10% of the time according to the International Monetary Fund. Okay, so are they partly to blame, the IMF? In recent years, recessions have become less frequent and don't last as long. The declines in economic output and employment that recessions can cause can become self-perpetuating. For example, declining consumer demand can pr prompt companies to lay off staff, in other words, you lose your job, which affects consumer spending power, which can further weaken consumer demand because they don't have the money, they don't spend. Similarly, the bear markets that often accompany recessions can reverse the wealth effect, suddenly making people less wealthy and further trimming consumption. Yeah, it makes the everyday common people poorer, but of course the rich, they might feel a pinch, but it may not affect them as much as the poor. Since the Great Depression, governments around the world have adopted fiscal and monetary policies to prevent a run of the mill recession from becoming far worse. Some of these stabilizing factors are automatic such as unemployment insurance that puts money into the pockets of employees who lost their jobs. Uh, I think they may have done that here 
in New Zealand in regards to the pandemic. It helped a lot of people out. Uh, people were paid to stay home, something like that. Other measures require specific actions such as cutting interest rates to stimulate investment. People don't have money, they don't invest, right? That's how we see it. Recessions are usually clearly identified only after they are over. Investors, economists and employees may also have very different experiences in terms of when a recession is at its worst. Equity markets, equities markets often decline before an economic downturn and so forth. What predicts a recession? While there is no single surefire predictor of recession, an inverted yield curve has come up, come before the, each of the 10 US recessions and so forth. So this information here. What causes recessions? Numerous economic theories attempt to explain why and how an economy goes into recession. These theories can be broadly categorized as economic, financial, psychological, or a combination of these factors. Some economists focus on eco economic changes, including structural shifts, etc., etc. Consumer debt continues to grow. Other theories focus on psychological factors such as over-exuberance during economic booms and deep pessimism during downturns to explain why recessions occur and persist. Keynesian economics focuses on psychological and so forth, so forth. You can read all this for yourself to better understand it. Recessions and depressions. According to the Ember, the U.S. has experienced 34 recessions since 1854, but only five since 1980. The downturn following the 2008 global financial crisis and the double dip slumps of the early 1980s were the worst since the Great Depression in the 1937-38 recession. So if it hits them hard, which obviously history has defined that it had, everybody else around the world globally tends to suffer. Recent recessions, and it talks about economic analysis, debating over the US economy, whether it was in recession or not. Frequently asked questions, what happens in a recession? Economic output, employment and consumer spending drop in a recession. Interest rates are also likely to decline as the central bank, such as the US Federal Reserve Bank, cuts rates to support the economy. The government's budget deficit widens as tax revenues decline, while spending on unemployment insurance and other social programs rises. Okay, so employment, they get laid off, people lose their jobs, and consumer spending drops in a recession because they don't have that money that income, that money to spend and what they need, etc. The bottom line, a recession is a significant widespread and prolonged downturn in the economic activity. A common rule of thumb is that two consecutive quarters of negative gross domestic product, GDP growth, mean recession, but many use more complex measures to decide if the economy is in recession. Unemployment is one key feature of recessions. As demands for goods and services falls, companies need fewer workers and may lay off staff to cut costs. Save themselves money, right? Laid off staff have to cut their own spending, which in turn hurts demand, which can lead to more layoffs. Since the Great Depression, governments around the world have adopted fiscal and monetary policies to prevent a run of the milk recession. I think we already read that. They've repeated it. So, the poor people suffer the most. And the companies, well, they have to last, so they lay off staff, they don't hire anybody, save their money. Or else they've had a great loss and they have to shut them. Okay, so that's one vast definition of recession. We're going to have a look at another one. Recession in e economics, the recession is a business cycle contraction when there is a general decline in economic activity. Recessions generally occur when there is a widespread drop in spending and adverse demand stock. This may be triggered by various events such as fi a financial crisis, an external trade shock, an adversary supply shock, the bursting of an economic bubble, or a large scale anthropogenic or natural disaster, e.g., a pandemic. In the United States, the recession is defined as a significant decline in eco economic activity spread across the market, lasting more than a few months normally visible GDP, real income, employment, industrial production, and wholesale retail sales. The European Union has adopted a similar definition. 
In the United Kingdom, a recession is defined as a negative economic growth for two consecutive quarters. So would you say that's a negative economic growth is a drop which affects the everyday person as well as businesses? Government usually responds to recessions by adopting expansionary macroeconomic policies such as increasing money supply or increased governing government spending and decreasing taxation. So that's when they just simply print more money, right? Is that what it is? Federal Reserve Bank prints more money, creating more loans, creating more debt. Could that be it? So here is a lot of definitions on what a recession is. The attributes of a recession type of recessional shape, psychological aspects, and so forth. A liquidity trap. Paradoxes of thrift and deleveraging. And some more information here, and the government responses to these recessions. Stock market, how that's affected. Some recessions have anticipated have been anticipated by stock market declines. US politics and administrative uh, and administration generally gets credit or blame for the state of the economy during its time in office. This state of affairs has caused disagreements about how particular recessions actually start. So if you have like a New Zealand one political party, say Labour Party, and then you have its opposition's competition the National Party, they may start throwing accusations, oh that's because of this government, you know, they're not doing this, they're not doing that, they're, they're weak, because they want to win the voters over, isn't they? Yeah, vote us in next time and we'll fix it for you, and when a politician opens his mouth, usually he's lying. Uh, um, they just want you, you know, win your confidence, win your vote, you'll vote for them, and then they don't deliver. Politics is a hard game. Unemployment is particularly high during a recession. Our, apparently, our employment in New Zealand is near non existent. Okay. There's lots of jobs out there, all this sort of stuff. History it goes on about all these different countries that have been affected by recessions. some references okay and third look at what is GDP gross domestic product or GDP is a monetary measure of the market value of all the final goods of services products and sold not resold in a specific time period by countries due to its complex and subjective nature this measure is often revised before being considered a reliable indicator GDP nominal etc etc so we've got some information here GDP definitions are maintained by a number of national and international economic organizations. And you said it's a history. Who came up with it? William Petty. FRS was an English econom economist, physician, scientist, and philosopher. He first became prominent serving Oliver Cromwell, and you know what happened to Oliver Cromwell, don't you? In the Commonwealth in Ireland. Cromwell apparently was executed or lost his head or something like that. He developed efficient methods to survey the land that was to be confiscated etc. So as a basic concept of GDP was invented by him to attack landlords against unfair taxation during warfare between the Dutch and the English between 1654 and 1676. Charles Davenant developed the method further in 1695. The modern concept of GDP was first developed by Simon Kuznets, Kuznets a 1934 US Congress report where he warned against its use as a measure of welfare okay. see below limitations and criticisms and so forth determining gross domestic product and so forth it's all the information here you can read it in your own time at your own leisure or pleasure and try to fully understand what actually is GDP recession and the pros and cons. So what we want to do, especially for New Zealanders, is 
for them to listen to this uh, news report. Okay, we we were going to add a comment, but News Hub for this particular uh, channel cuts off your comments. It doesn't allow you to comment. So we decided to make this video. And this guy confronts the New Zealand Prime Minister, probes her, and so forth. A quote, nasty cocktail of factors has some economists worried that we're heading towards a recession over the next year. Stephen Topless, BNZ, last week said he expects a recession late 2022, early 2023. We're going to the Prime Minister to sit there and do now. Good morning, Prime Minister. Thank you for being with us. Are Good we morning. are we going to have a recession? Well, look, actually, when you when you go through a lot of the commentary from the economists, there's an acknowledgement that everything right now is extremely volatile. There doesn't seem to be that expectation that in the next quarter um, we'll see results like we've seen in this quarter. And that's for a number of factors: the reopening of the borders, the fact that in this quarter, this you know, next quarter we haven't seen, we won't see the same impact of Omicron and those restrictions as we had in the last. Uh, and so not necessarily in the next quarter, but of course, it is a tough international environment right now, Ryan. And so that's why we have to do everything we can to support New Zealanders through. Okay, so you acknowledge that later this year or early next year, we could have a recession. The, the, the fact is the cocktail is potent enough, it's on the cards. Ryan, all I'm saying is that in the near term, what you're seeing is economists not making the same predictions around what we've seen in this quarter for the next. Um, but again, what I'm acknowledging generally is that it is a tough uh, international environment right now. But the underlying fundamentals for New Zealand are strong. You know, our economy uh, has still grown and uh, has seen more activity post-COVID than we did pre. Uh, our economy has grown by over 3%. So we know that actually there is underlying strength in our economy. We've got low unemployment, we've got low debt. We're well positioned to navigate what is a very stormy, turbulent time internationally, but it is very, very volatile. I yeah, think. It is, uh, that is those things are true, but it doesn't feel like things are that rosy, does it? Our KiwiSavers are getting attacked, basically. Our house prices are, well, uncertain at best. We are paying more and more for uh, our mortgages, all that kind of stuff. And so you said this morning that you came to help Kiwis through whatever might be ahead of us. Um, August 14th, the petrol tax cut is going to come off, the, the 25 cents a litre. Um, will you extend that? Will you look at extending that? So at the moment, you'll remember in the budget, of course, we, we did extend it. So that's the extra two months that we already extended at budget time. And what also comes in at August is that $350 payment uh, for those on 70000 or less as their individual income. And so we've also got that additional support that comes in in that August period. But so that, yes, that you're right, apply. it is due to come off at that. It doesn't apply to everyone though, does it? So it the doesn't. people who are getting the advantage of the tax, the petrol tax cut now won't get the 350 payment. It does reach a large number of New Zealanders, but you're right, not everyone, because it is targeted to those who are earning $70,000 or less as an individual, not household, as an individual earner. Uh, and so, yes, it is due to come out mid-August, around the same time that that payment comes in. We have said we'll keep looking at the circumstances, but that's currently the decisions that we're taking. Okay, budget. can you give voters an indication of what the circumstances would need to be? When you brought in the 25 cents, we were at about $3 a litre. We're now at $3.23 for 91 in yeah. Brent crude, yeah, the price of oil has increased. I was just looking at some of the, because what we keep an eye on is whether or not that reduction that we put in that 25 cents a litre, we keep checking that it's been passed through. Uh, and at this stage, you know, we have seen an increase in the price of oil, and that's what people are seeing at, at the pump. And a number of really difficult factors alongside the war, uh, the fact that we aren't seeing out of some countries increases in production to make up for the fact that we have that impact on Russian oil. Uh, so it is very, very tough right now. Right, well, I don't want to be, give a prescriptive, you know, if, if X happens, Y happens. What we have said is, yes, it is due to come off in August, but in the same way that we had a look at the circumstances, we will keep doing that. Um, but I, I just, it's too early to say uh, right now. What about increasing it further now? Because if you said when petrol was $3, you said we're worried people won't get to work, we'll give you 25 cents off. 
now it's at three dollars twenty-three. Mm -hmm. You must be more worried about that. And it's been extremely volatile. We see a lot of movement. We also see a lot of variation at the pump. And I was looking again, as I say, at this report last night. Even within one city, you can see petrol prices that have a range of sometimes over twenty cents a litre. So a difference in one place, depending on when you're purchasing your fuel from. So a lot of volatility, a lot of movement. That's why, yes, we've done the 25 cents, but we've also done other things, right? Cut the price of public transport in half. We've also got the family tax credit changes that we made. We also have the in, 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 incoming payment in August at three extra $350. We're not relying on one tool alone because of the volatility that we're seeing. We'll have to wait and see on that one. Um, Prime Minister, let's move to the Tauranga by-election. Um, Jan Tanetti, your candidate. So this, you've just promoted her, and Tauranga has turned, almost turned their backs on her. Uh, I think she got about 38% of the vote. That's entirely fair, is it right? Well, she got about 38% of the vote in 2020, down to 25%. What do you put that down to? Well, first of all, 2020 was an extraordinary election, so one of my comparison points is actually not just one, but if we look over a number of decades, in a seat that, that Labour hasn't won, so just to put put the, the, into a little bit of historic context there, and can I give my congratulations to Sam as well before I share this analysis. So if you look back over the past few decades, Jan actually delivered one of the better results that Labour has had over that period of time, so it was akin to what we received in 2017 when we obviously formed a government uh, and so I actually my, my thanks to Jan you know she she did a great job for us and she does a great job working across the area she's an ex-school principal locally and that's why one of the areas that we continue to promote her in is education because she does an exceptional job so so it's a very interesting news report this guy is really probing the New Zealand Prime Minister and she's coming back positive and is she good or is she good okay uh, we'll just leave it at that you can go and check out this news report yourself if you want to see the whole thing you want to hear more of you see the Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern we'll leave the link below if you liked this uploaded video Please subscribe to our channel, give us a like, a couple of thumbs uh, up, and add your comments below the video. Tell us what your view is on the possible recession, New Zealand situation at the moment, etc. etc. And we'll get back to you on those as soon as we can. And then go discuss this with your family, friends, neighbours, etc. to get feedback on what they think and you show them this video to get feedback on what we've said, what she said, what Ryan said in this recession it's supposed to hit us. Uh, starting from the US and then globally probably hit New Zealand. That's supposedly supposed to hit New Zealand hard. Unemployment will be up because businesses will drop people, you know, lay them off all that sort of stuff, won't be hiring cut costs and all that sort of stuff because of that recession okay we hope you enjoyed it and if there's a part two there's a part two we've got that in the back of our mind but we're not too sure if we actually will okay thank you for taking the time to watch this our last video